G'day YouTube, welcome to my channel 1MJ. This channel is about one man's journey, that one man being me, into cryptocurrencies. So today I thought I'd do uh, a shorter video and this one's just going to be about a couple of basic rules that I follow when it comes to uh, cryptocurrencies. I think if you have a look at these, uh, they might work for you as well, but obviously you've got to work that out for yourself, but this is what's worked for me uh, and has helped me get through. So number one, do your own research. You need to understand what cryptocurrencies is most of all. So I highly recommend looking up blockchain as opposed to just Bitcoin. Bitcoin's where it all kind of sort of stems from, but understand blockchain, blockchain technology. It's more than just Bitcoin itself. Now you don't need to know everything, but it's quite easy to yeah understand what blockchain is. Come over here, YouTube, what is blockchain? It's gonna come up with a ton of videos here and you don't have to watch every single one and most are fairly short, some are a little bit longer, some are quite long. But I think if you watch a couple of these, they're definitely gonna help you understand exactly what blockchain technology is as opposed to just Bitcoin all by itself. Bitcoin's important, we wanna know what that is, but blockchain, the technology itself, is really, really important and is kind of where uh, you'll get a better understanding of the whole crypto uh, industry and uh, sort of sphere itself, crypto space, whatever you want to call it. Likewise, come over to Google or whatever search engine you're using, what is blockchain? There's going to be a ton of different sites that will come up here and it's going to tell you all about uh, blockchain technology and things like that. So once you've done a little bit of research, then we can sort of move on. But don't go, inve don't go investing into cryptocurrencies until you have at least a basic understanding of exactly what blockchain is and cryptocurrencies in sort of general. Do your own research goes a little bit further than just understanding blockchain technology as well. I highly recommend understanding what you're going to invest in, like when it comes to coins and things like that. So if we come over to CoinGecko, there's a ton of coins. I think there was over 5,000 coins or something like that on uh, coin market uh, cap and things like that. I'm not sure how many are listed uh, on CoinGecko in total, but we can see there's over 100 here. So there's a ton of different coins that you could invest in. This is just the top 100, and it continues. There we go, we've got 78 pages, so God knows how many there are. If there's 100 on each, then that's 7,800 uh, different cryptocurrencies you can uh, invest in. And I can tell you right now, a majority of them are just garbage and rubbish. There are good ones out there, by all means. I'm not saying it's all garbage, but a lot of these, they won't be around in the future and you're going to have wasted your money. So you really need to do your own research. I can't recommend that enough. Understand what blockchain technology is and then understand the different cryptos that you're going to invest in as well. And it's quite easy to get a bit of information on the cryptos. Sorry, we'll go back here. All you've got to do is let's say you like Litecoin. We can go across to Litecoin. There's a couple of different sites that you can uh, get onto that are going to help you. They've got their own community. They're on Reddit, Twitter, Facebook, got the litecointalk.org, uh, GitHub, all sorts of things. So these are the kind of things that you have to do if you're going to get into cryptocurrencies is understand the projects, do some research. I highly recommend having a look at their white paper if you're a little bit tech savvy. Not that I'm saying I'm completely tech savvy, but if the white paper, white paper seems a bit too much, Get on YouTube, have a look at some of the stuff you see on YouTube, but understand that some of that's just crap as well. Don't just trust YouTubers. Also get on Facebook, get on Twitter, all those sorts of things. Do some research, see if they have uh, a Discord service and Telegram and things like that. That's where you gotta find out the good information before you just chuck your money in. So, number three, uh, sorry, number two, learn how to read charts and understand investment psychology. So this is before we've even invested in crypto. Understand how charts work. So let's have a look at a Bitcoin chart. So this is uh, a Bitcoin chart going back quite a number of years. We can go back to here and we can see that uh, in 2013, Bitcoin had an all-time high. Now it doesn't look very big there, but at the time it was quite high. And then what happened is it had a big sell-off, pumped back up a little bit, had another sell-off, pumped back up a little bit, and then had a long protracted sell-off until we got down to here. So it was an all-time, uh, not an all-time low, but it hit its sort of low for this period. And then it has slowly but surely started to come back up. But it's had peaks and troughs, so it bumped up, it dropped down, it bumped up a little bit, dropped down, bumped up, had a steep sell-off, had a bit of a steep rise, had another steep sell-off. And again, we went from 2013 
and we come all the way across to 2017 before it hit its all-time high again so it reached here but then we look when it hit its all-time high look what it's done here it's just having this massive sort of parabolic move now all markets do things similar to, to similar to this sorry they have a similar pattern just not uh, as extreme or volatile as Bitcoin but markets will trade up then they'll sell off a little bit and then they'll trade up and then they'll sell off a little bit and then they'll trade up and they'll sell off a bit and they all go like this but there's a point where a project might just die and then it just dies off. If it's a good project, then this is the way it's going to go. It's going to go up and down and up and down and up and down. And you have to understand that. So having an investment plan is really important as well. Being able to understand the markets and find out where you are and that investment psychology, it's all based around sort of human emotion. There's bots and things out there trading, but people get really keen and into something when it's pumping and then all of a sudden... Uh, the smart money gets out, they've hit their point and they've taken their profits and it starts to drop, drop. and then the what they call dumb money, which is uh, the regular punters, unfortunately, they get left holding the bags and watched you know, all this money that they put in turn into nothing. So you need to have an investment plan. Uh, you can't tell in the market perfectly, you don't need to. You don't have to buy exactly when it's at its lowest and sell exactly when it's at its highest. Just, you know, dollar cost averaging is the easiest way. And here's a really important one. No one ever lost money taking profits. If your coin is in profit, don't be afraid to take some off the table. Now, you don't have to take it all. Let's say you put $100 in, turns into $200. Awesome. Take 25% of that off. Take $50 off the table. That's $50 you got back. You still got $150 uh, in there plus your original 100 and then you just wait and see what happens. Maybe you save that $50, put it into something else. Maybe you go buy yourself something nice. Maybe you wait for the market to drop back down and put that $50 back in when it gets low again. But don't be afraid to take profits and don't worry about trying to time the market perfectly. No one can do that. Not even the best traders and things like that. Not even the best investors. Not your keys, not your crypto. The way we buy crypto is we've got to get onto uh, an exchange to buy it. And while you may hand over the money, if you haven't taken that crypto off the exchange, you technically don't own it. It's still owned by the uh, exchange. Not so much, it's not owned by the exchange, that's not true, but it's still in the exchange's hands. They could just run off with your money. It wouldn't be the first time. Mount Gox, have a look into that. If you don't think that it can happen, they can get hacked. Uh, yeah, there's all sorts of things that can happen. So if you buy crypto, Make sure that you're taking it off and putting it into a wallet, whether it's a cold wallet or a hot wallet or uh, a ledger or a trezor or, or whatever device uh, you decide to use. If it's on the exchange, it's still not really yours. Number five, pretty important one. Never disclose your seed phrase to anyone for any reason whatsoever. The only people you want to have your uh, seed phrase is the people that you're happy to take uh, your crypto. So that might be no one might be some members of the family, you know, whoever. But if you're not happy for them to come and take that crypto, do not hand that seed phrase over. Be careful of all sorts of scams. And we'll get into scams later. But you might get emails saying, you know, we need your seed phrase. And they'll pretend to be from someone, you know, the wallet that you use or Ledger or someone. Ledger's never going to ask for your seed phrase and neither is Trezor or anyone like that. Don't hand it over. You will lose your coins. Number six, HODL. So hold on for dear life. It's basically an investment kind of theory. Uh, and that's the best way to make the biggest gains. Uh, so yeah, HODL, hold on for dear life, is the best method in the long run uh, if you're invested in a good project. So again, if you invest in a bad project, a bad project, sorry, you're probably going to lose your money unless you can get in and get out before it starts to tank. But most traders lose money in general. And definitely, most traders lose money compared to uh, long-term investors. If you simply get in and hold for the long-term in a good project, you're going to make money and you're going to make good money. In, in, you know, in the long-term, in the short-term, though, uh, you could get burnt and lose money. That's just the way it goes. Number seven, this one's pretty important as well. Shorting Bitcoin or shorting the market is only profitable really in a bear market. It's not that it can't be done in a bull market, but it is much harder. And we go back to here. Most traders lose money. That's just a fact. 
95% of traders lose money and only maybe 5% of traders make money but even they generally don't make anywhere near as much money as long-term investors. So the only time you want to bet against the market, if you're going to do that, and I definitely don't, I'm not into leverage trading at all, I don't want to get into that, it feels more like gambling. Yeah, betting against the market, i.e. betting against Bitcoin and that, it's a very short-term thing. You're better to simply just put your money into the good projects and hold over the long-term. You will do better than trying to get bet against the market. Buying the dip, you'll hear this a lot. People say, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. And while buying the dip is true, and it definitely works, in the long term, it doesn't really matter. But in the short term, if you're buying the dip and it's in a bull market, it can hurt. So you just need to understand that. Buying the dip is better, and it goes against human psychology. When we see something is pumping and it's all in the green, we go back over here. We see something that is in the green. We're having a bit of red at the moment, but we're like, oh, it's up 6% or, you know, 0.6 uh, of a percent. That's not really too much of a gain, but let's say it's up 10, 15%. That's when everyone wants to jump in and buy it. They're like, yeah, it's pumping. It's going to keep going. This is actually where you're more likely to do better is buying when it's gone down. But again, be careful if it's in a bull market, uh, sorry, a bear market, then it's quite likely going to be lower. So you've got to be investing for the long term. But these are the days, particularly in a bull market, when everything's going up, wait for the days that it's had a good health, healthy pullback and then get in. You'll do better in the long run. All right, investing in crypto is a risk. This is 100% uh, true. Crypto is a risk. It's a new emerging asset. It still hasn't really stood the test of time and been proven. Although Bitcoin's been around for, I think, about 11 years now. So... Uh, you know, if we haven't proven uh, it's worth yet, I would say that it's not too far off. But we'll just have to wait and see. It's definitely a risk. Investing in coins that are outside of the top 10 is even more of a risk. Outside of the top 50 is even more of a risk again. Outside of the top 100 is very risky. And if you're going way down the page, and again, we're going to go back here. And you're finding something at around page 78 or something like that that is very dangerous you're probably just going to throw your money away in all fairness so be very very careful in investing in things that are that far down make sure you've done your research there i'm not saying there's nothing good back there i'm just saying it's very very risky if you've done your research and you know then sweet go for it now number 10 it's a really important one don't get scammed there are a ton of scams out there tons and tons and tons no one is going to give you free crypto. No one. That's just the way it works. And certainly don't send, in, send anyone your crypto believing they will send you more back. That is a total scam. On YouTube, there's been plenty of them. They'll have these things and it'll be, you know, Brad Garlinghouse from Ripple is doing something live and they're saying, you know, send us your Ripple and we'll send you 10 times as much back. It's not Brad Garlinghouse. It's not Ripple doing that. It is a total scam and a fraud. XRP was just the latest one. There's been other ones with Charlie Lee from Litecoin and CZ from Binance. They are not giving away free crypto. Nobody does it. It is a scam. Don't click on links from emails that are randomly sent to you, uh, you know, about cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin and Ethereum and all that. It's a scam. You're going to end up losing anything you've got. Stay away from it. And number 11, and my final rule, stick to these above rules. They are really, really good rules. Now, these are the rules that I follow, and I again, I stick to them. you got to do your own research and decide whether it's for you. Nothing what I've done is any kind of financial advice or investment advice. I'm not a financial trader. Uh, this is just what I've done. And again, my channel's about my kind of uh, journey going through, and you can see what worked for me and what didn't work for me, and then you can make your own decision. But that is the most important one, and that's why it's at the top. Do your own research. Know what you're investing in. Know who you're trusting. Uh, if you're going to copy, you know what they do. And by all means, I'm not saying don't copy what I'm doing because I have made mistakes before, and I have no doubt I'll make some more in the future. But hopefully, I feel like I'm getting to the point where I'm not making too many mistakes anymore and I'm starting to make a lot better decisions. Again, I've been in the game a little while now. We'll see how I go. Anyway, that's it from me today. Thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, if you like what I'm doing, uh, please hit the like button and subscribe uh, and leave a comment down the bottom as well.
And if you think I'm not doing very well and there's things that I could do to make this channel better, again, by all means, leave the comments down below. I don't really need nasty comments. They're not uh, appreciated. But if you think I suck, at least tell me why I suck and how I can improve uh, and build this channel. Anyway, thanks again. Be safe. Stay kind to one another. Till next time, I'm out.